first one is either oh, you. If it's from Mark, no, 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 no. it's their fault. <laughs> Mark and Kathy and I, Mark was part of the group of people that during that period of time we were rather <laughs> wild and crazy in my early 30s. And so Mark is also still a dear friend. And uh, are you paraphrasing? <laughs> is there a point? <laughs> what if it's not even from him, Mom? Just relax. <laughs> if it's not from him, I'm off the hook. <laughs> Maybe okay, Clint. here we go. We'll start with the first one. Either you or one of your daughters, Brenda, flying down Prescott Street, a uh, street called Prescott, to the jump, and Cliff Beyond. Remember, ah, which is something we used to ride motorcycles down you know, Prescott Street. It's a real street, uh, steep street in Monterey. These are some Not memories really Mark has of Mom. And the next one would be a beautiful visit to San Francisco, a walk down the Irving Street, and dim sun for everyone. This is the time you went with. And then sharing time, sharing friends, and playing volleyball on Monterey Beach with all the camaraderie. Last but not least, two people take a shower and five join in. There's a metaphor <laughs> not touching, but sharing and loving. Remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that's why I had this one fixed for this. <laughs> it was hippie day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jesus. That's still an excuse for taking a shower with six other people. <laughs> no, it's drought day. <laughs> and we were saving water. Yeah. Okay. Um, here we go. Um, this is a memory of, of Carolyn. It says, remember arguing outside the office at the county clerk while waiting to get a marriage license. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> That's our special we moment. <laughs> we invited Tony's when we were going to get married and we were screaming at each other all the way up there. And we only went ahead and got the license because we paid $60 for it. <laughs> So we got it, and then we got got in the car. We got we went ahead and hey, went Tony, out to Jack and Mary. I know. I know. He doesn't want to pay attention. He's ignoring me. So we went on out to the car, out to the church, and Jack married us, and we liked each other right in. We like each other now. Okay. John, who is the only one I think who gets read emotionally, to read the ones from Brenda and me and Ruby. For us. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay, which ones do you want to read? This one over here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Remember that wonderful train trip we took? Our first train ride. It was a real challenge just standing upright, much less going between cars. Then we arrived at the train station at midnight, not a soul in sight. I thought it was quite adventurous. You, on the other hand, saw murderers and rapists behind every shadow of the moon. So we stayed in the ladies' room until help arrived. Thanks for being my help, being my help time and time again. Love you more than life itself. Yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't hear him out of the ladies' room. She was terrified. I've never seen, I was going, oh, this is great. I mean, they had these benches in the ladies' yeah. room and everything, but it was midnight and nobody was there. Uh, I hire you as a woman of many wonderful, unique qualities, a woman of independence yet compassionate, that which is shared with a remarkable intellect. Thank you for being such a positive influence on my life, as you have many others within the past 50 years. I hope and pray that the next 50 bring you off all the happiness and success you deserve. From someone who has who has particularly benefited from the fruits of your labor, <laughs> many happy returns, your son-in-law. There <laughs> Hey, that's longer than David's fruits was. Of your labor. <laughs> <laughs> David, said, David said you should make them like you. Uh. <laughs> okay, and uh, this, okay, well, this person, huh? Are you going to specifically? So I was just to know, have you read it? No, no yeah, okay. Mom, we'll let Mom guess his number. She's not here. Carolyn, a funny lady. I hadn't worked at the Sunstar very long before I had occasion to stop by Carolyn's desk. I knew she had recently married and wanted to make a little friendly conversation when I noticed a photo on her desk of Carolyn and a good-looking man in a friendly pose. Oh, is that your husband, I asked? Oh, yeah, she laughed. 
He sure looks like a lot like Clint Eastwood, I said. That's what everyone said. She laughed again. It was quite a while later that I discovered the photo was Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Although I've never met Mr. Tafoya, somehow I always imagined him looking a lot like Clint Eastwood. I wonder why. I don't know. Very she's not here. Who was it from? Kim Osborne. Okay. Now it's John's turn. Where'd John go? You go sit by mom. You're gonna do this one? And these two. Those are from you three girls? Yeah. Now you have to figure out which is which. Get through this one, one, mom. Dean, <laughs> <laughs> you're not in for much. You're not in for much. That's fine. Why didn't I chance I can get No, that's okay, because I, 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 I cry too easily. <laughs> I'd rather be behind this camera. <laughs> what? My hair's red, my hair's blood. Yeah. Blood. I didn't see him. Okay. There are so many memories. We have been together 26 years. And I think about, <laughs> I think about how I've always been able to count on you. There's not been one time in my life when you haven't been there for me. One of the hardest times in my life was my visit with Ted S. when I was about 17 years old. You were there the whole time holding my hand. That is something I'll never forget. But aside being a mother and were my best supporting friend at the time when I felt I had no one else. The second toughest time was my visit with Chuck S. What a pillar of strength you were for me. When things were crumbling for you, you always put your needs aside for the ones you love. You're my role model when it comes to a gay love. A <laughs> love. <laughs> 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 You have always treated me with respect, tenderness, and most of all, you have always made me feel loved. I hope that I can be a good, as good a mother to my son as you are to me. I love you. I think it's There's one memory that stands out clearly in my mind. I had been dating David for about six months and was very much in love. <laughs> Somehow I knew that this was a lifetime thing, and being 18 it scared me a little. I remember telling mom that I was thinking about breaking up with David for a little while, just to clear my head. <coughs> and then when we got back together, I'd be ready for a lifetime commitment. She asked me if I really loved him, and of course I did. She explained to me that even though I was afraid, I was only afraid of being happy. Because of the events in our lives, the consistency, calmness, and happiness I had with David <coughs> was a new situation for me. She encouraged me to do what I needed to do, but also took, a, but also to look deep within my heart before deciding anything. She told me that I had to know that David was a special person, and I couldn't assume that he would understand this temporary need to be free. Because I had no doubts about how I felt about him, it would be, it would only be a game and not a fair one. I did just what she said and thought about it a lot. I decided that she was right. I was only responding to the unknown. Today, 12 years later, I can only think of how much that conversation may have changed the course of my life and thank her from the bottom of my heart for always being there, love always. Mm -hmm. She doesn't look like she's been married for five years now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the last one. Given a task to recall a moment... <laughs> given a task to recall a moment with this woman, a clear picture in my mind of unconditional love, a mother, a wife, a friend, and support system to many. From which part of this relationship should this moment come, perhaps from childhood when we sat together singing a heartfelt me and you against the world. I have that recording still. Or possibly from the days as a teenager, as if my problems alone were enough to deal with. She also opened her home and her heart to any and all my friends' problems as well. Possibly I can find this moment from the days as a young adult starting out on her own for the first time when no problem, financial or emotional, was too much of a burden. When with her knowledge of my needs, they were filled. I guess I could also go from the current stage as a maturing adult when mom always has the right words to say. No single occasion can signify the strength, courage, and support that has been modeled to me through her making me the person I am today. I'm proud to be her favorite daughter. <laughs> I really feel 
someone fortunate to have had, first of all, I really feel grateful and really blessed to, to see everybody that's here and surprised. And uh, I feel real grateful. As several people mentioned um, talking to me about what's going on with them. And I feel uh, very gifted every time someone shares with me intimate things about themselves because it's like, it's um, it's an honor, uh, I consider it an honor when people share on a personal level with me. Uh, I always just feel so surprised and, and, and pleased that, uh, that, that they have an element of trust. And uh, just as I do today, I mean, um, I look around and I think, gosh, you know, these people, every single person in this room means something to me, something very special. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's just, just such an honor to have you all here in terms of my daughters and, uh, you know, when when the girls were young, it was you, you read and you see on television, you know, different paths that, that uh, children take, and you know that a lot of those children have really good parents. And uh, just watching the girls grow up and watching them develop, and I love mothering every single year, and my still my umbilical cords are still stretched. I still haven't gotten over them moving out 12 years. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I just as soon have them all living here. <laughs> Husbands, my son-in-laws living here, my two wonderful son-in-laws that I have. And, and, and as the girls grew up, and, and Brenda married, and she married the boy that I thought was the most wonderful boy in the world for her, and then I'll be darned if Diane didn't go out and find one. Equally, I mean, these, these girls and their marriages, I've had a little difficulty with marriage. Uh, my daughters have grown up and uh, with enough ability to look carefully and to, to uh, approach it from a, a lifelong commitment standpoint. And that's what what they do, and I, and and I, of course, I tell them when they want to talk about problems with their men that they have to talk to each other because I don't do well in that area. I mean, it took me this long to find my Tony, <laughs> who's just the most wonderful man I've ever known, and uh, we kind of like him too. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, but I'm really, you know, I'm so proud of, of the girls, and I'm so proud and so pleased that I got to be a part of um, of their lives as youngsters, and that uh, and that I get to observe. You know, they've all grown up. Just they're all very outspoken. You may have noticed today while they were ordering <laughs> around. Um, they they won't let anything get by them, you know, and they're just as successful young women, and. Uh, I'm embarrassed because all of these things were read today, so I'm going to kill them. Do it later, Carolyn. Other than that, thank you all for being here. Have some cake. And, and have some cake. Yay! 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 Yay!